What is up my friends and welcome back to Hobble Creates. My name is Hobble and in the last episode I showed you how to make our very first contraption which is an automatic wood farm. If that sounds interesting to you then be sure to check out that video but at the end of that episode I mentioned that today we're going to be turning our cobblestone into something more useful. Because if we take a look at the uses for cobblestone we can see that if we put it into some crushing wheels we will get some gravel. If we send that gravel through a washing system we will get flint, which is not so useful, but we will also get iron nuggets, which is useful. But then if we take that gravel and we send it through another set of crushing wheels, we will get some sand. If we then haunt that sand, we can turn it into soul sand, which when washed will give us a large supply of nether quartz and a little bit of gold. So if you are new here, then hit that subscribe button and remember to leave a like. And as always, down below you can find all of the chapters that you might need, just in case you either miss something, you can skip forward, skip back, whatever your heart desires. So up on the hill, I have got an example of what we're going to be building today. This system right here is what we're going to use to turn our cobblestone into a lot of quartz and a little bit of gold. It's not going to be this exact system because I did build this a couple of weeks ago and I can't quite remember how I put it together, but it's going to be a similar system that's going to yield the same results. So down at our factory level now, I've got a conveyor belt here that is going to represent where we've got our cobblestone coming in. Now I must warn you that if you want to run these machines at maximum speed, you may need to add in a couple more cobblestone generator modules. And if you're not sure how that one's built, of course check out that episode. But this is going to chew through cobblestone like there is no tomorrow. However, since this is a demonstration, I'm going to be using the creative crate. This is just going to signify where we've got our cobblestone coming in. So we've got our belt here, we're going to add in a shaft, we're going to pop on a vertical gearbox on one side, vertical gearbox on the other side, and on here we're going to add in our crushing wheels. And then if we add in positive power to this right hand side here, those wheels are going to be spinning in the correct direction. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to shorten this belt because we only need this to be extended one extra block from our gearbox. We're going to try and make this a compact build, but right on the end of this belt then we're going to pop down a 3x3 three three set of item vaults. Then we're going to come around to the side with the crushing wheels on. Make sure you're not standing up here when these are on, otherwise you will not have a good day. And right here, we're going to pop in a brass funnel. And it does need to be a brass funnel because we're going to be dealing in large quantities and an underside funnel can only deal with one item at a time. Now on the front side of our vault, I've gone ahead and added three parallel belts. And what that means is we're going to be able to process three stacks of gravel at a time. And all we need to do is add an additional two blocks onto this. And that should really be long enough. Then right at the end, we're going to add in another item vault, and this is where we're actually going to have all of our finished products end up. Then at the end of the belt, we're going to add in some more brass funnels. Now, these ones actually do need to be brass. You can get away with doing andesite anywhere in this build. However, these need to be brass because we need to be able to filter this to say, do not accept any gravel. We only want the nuggets and the flints to be able to go in here. So let's grab ourselves a regular filter, we're going to add in our gravel, we're going to make sure that we are denying the gravel, and then we're going to click the tick, and then we just add this to each of our brass funnels. Now let's build up the washing system, so we're going to come to any side, and we're going to pop down some regular blocks, it doesn't need to be glass, I'm just going to use glass so you guys can see what's going on. Then we need to pop down a temporary block, and on here we're going to hold crouch, and we're going to right click on an encased fan, and we're going to do that all the way across, we're going to go for four of these bad boys, and let's remove that temporary block. We're going to add in a permanent block to the left of it and a permanent block down here. That's just going to keep the water in. Now to keep this simple, we're just going to pop on a shaft here and here. And that's going to mean that the water that we're going to place in here now is not going to escape. And all that's left to do is give everything a bit of rotational power. Now to make sure all of these fans are actually spinning in the same direction as each other, we're going to be using encased chain drives. You could also just put on a belt I guess would also work like we did over on the cobblestone generator, but we're at the point now where encased chain drives should be affordable. Then all we're going to do is add one and two, but on this second one over here we're going to make sure that this is facing down. This will still work, this is a really nice way to transfer the power, but we're going to have that one facing down, we're going to have a vertical gearbox underneath it, and then from our belt over there, we're just going to power things on. And what we're going to do is we're going to give ourselves a little bit of power quickly, just to make sure that these particles are blowing to the left. Or if you stood on this side, they'll be blowing to the right. Now on the opposite side of our fans, we're going to do the same. We're going to add in a shaft here. We're going to add in a chain drive, a chain drive, and a chain drive. And we're going to go for one more as well. We're going to take another gearbox and we're just going to pop it on right here. Because we want this to be the same rotation as this belt here. We want everything moving towards the left. 
And if we add in one gearbox, all that's going to do is flip the rotation. So we're adding in a second one here. That's why we've got this janky old shaft here, but it's fine. And all that's left to do is plug this in and give it a little bit of speed. We're going to go for maybe a modest 64 to begin with, just to see this thing in action. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take some glass blocks and we're going to pop one here, here, there, and there. And all that's going to do is block those particles from extending to infinity and beyond. So we're starting to get a little bit of a backlog, which is great. We're generating more than we are using. So eventually this entire area is going to fill up. Look at that, three so far, wonderful. And we have got ourselves 14 flint and eight iron nuggets. Now, since I don't really know of a reason to keep a large amount of flint, I'm actually going to dispose of this the same way I showed you in the last episode on how to get rid of excess saplings or sticks, is we're going to take our brass funnel, we're going to hold down crouch, we're going to right click it onto our vault, then we're going to set the filter to be only flint, and then we're going to flip this around and all of our flint should disappear into the lava. And we've only got iron nuggets. Now we could take this one step further and add nine mechanical crafters to our vault and that'll turn the iron nuggets then into iron ingots. But that's kind of beyond the scope of today's video, but it's something that we're going to do in the future if we ever need iron ingots anyway. So now that you guys are grasping the basics of crushing and washing, we now need to build the big boy version of this, which is the one up on the hill there, which is going to turn our cobblestone into quartz and gold. So in the same way that we started this version over here, I've gone ahead and made exactly the same thing. However, this time we have got two sets of crushing wheels because this one's going to turn it into gravel. Then we're going to turn that gravel into sand. And the main difference is I've actually raised this item vault up. It's no longer ground level. It's one block above. We can still access it with our funnel, but what that's going to mean is we can actually start stacking this design on top of each other. For example, we can now pop down some shafts here with a parallel line like so, connect some belts, and if we pop on some funnels, we can then just pull out over the top of our crushing wheels, which is honestly why the item vault is one of my favorite new blocks. But now we need to turn the sand that we're going to have coming in, we need to turn that into soul sand. And the way that we're going to do that is using fans, much like we did over here, except instead of water, we're going to pop down some soul sand with our glasses and we're going to light that soul sand on fire. And it'll look something a little bit like this. So we've got the soul fire over here. I've added another item vault. I did a little bit of a chain drive action, but we haven't actually powered this yet. We're going to do that a little bit later. We've come to tuning everything on once we've kind of got the main shape built. And much like we did earlier, we're just going to add in a wall here. That's going to stop those particles just going way too far. Then on our newest item vault, we're going to add in our funnels. Then we need to grab ourselves another filter. We're going to say you cannot accept sand, only soul sand. We're going to set that to deny. We're going to click the tick button and then we're going to add this here, here and here. And much like before, I'm actually going to remove this bottom layer here. We're going to add it up above. That way we've still got our three by three vault. And now we can actually add a little bit more automation on top of this one. So again, we're going to add in some shafts. We're going to throw in our belts, extend them across, add in some building blocks to one side. We're going to go for the same side as we got the fans going. Temporary block, encased fan, fan, fan and fan. Add a block here to stop the water spilling out. Same on this side. And again, we're going to go for shafts because they're in easy supply. And then on the end of this belt, again, we're going to need another set of item vaults. Let's add in our water sources now. Let's go ahead and block this one off as well. Again, it's going to stop the water particles just extending too far. Add in some more in case chain drives. And provided I've remembered everything correctly, this should technically work. So why don't we go ahead and test this out? So we need to supply some rotational power to two sets of belts. Here and here, we need to supply some rotational power to our encased fans. And we need to make sure that those fans are blowing and not pulling. So much like before, we're going to have some downwards facing chain drives on the end of these. We can connect those with a shaft. Now these are all set to the same motion. And I think we're probably just going to plug in down here somewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to extend this belt an extra block. Then from that block, we're going to add in some shafts, going to try and line it up as best we can. We're going to add in a vertical gearbox and we're going to connect it up like that. Now, looking at the side where we've got our belt exposed, I'm thinking that if we go ahead and remove that end glass block here and then we add in a vertical gearbox again, that's going to make sure that we're spinning in the correct direction. We can take some chain drive and we can just run this all the way up. We're going to take some shaft, plug it in like so. That should, that should work. And we can actually add that glass block back as well. Now in doing my final checks before we go ahead and plug this thing, I notice I made two tiny little mistakes. 
And the first mistake is, we need this belt in the middle here, we need that to be going from left to right, we don't want it to be going right to left. Easy fix, we just need to take this shaft and we need just to pop in any kind of gearbox. That's going to make sure that from here we're going to go left, right and left. Now I've also gone ahead and moved this item vault up a little bit, it didn't need to touch. And I was concerned about them interacting with each other, I don't know if that is a thing, I'm still quite new to this block. And as a byproduct of crushing gravel into sand, we also have a byproduct of flint and clay. So on the inside here, we need to make sure that we are only pulling out the sand. We don't want anything else going here. We can deal with that a little bit later. We can do the whole lava method again if we wanted to, or we can save it and put it into another vault somewhere. That's something we can work on a little bit later. But now I think we're probably ready to give this an actual test. So let's plug this in. We're going we're gonna to do a stress test here. We're going to put it to maximum speed. And yes, we should see that we are starting to build upon sand on this middle belt, and eventually, that should actually come out here. And it looks like I forgot to add one more set of funnels. This is going to allow the soil sand to come out and actually get washed. And there we are. Everything is now being washed, and eventually, we should see that we are getting nether quartz and a tiny little bit of gold. And there it is, my friends. We've got, We've got 98 quid nether quartz and 4 gold nuggets. So now when we go ahead and set up some mega storage, we can split this up, we can send the nether quartz over to the nether quartz area. And nether quartz is what we're going to need when it comes to making our own andesite alloys from scratch. But there we go my friends, we have got two awesome systems that are now going to turn cobblestone into quartz, gold nuggets and iron nuggets for absolutely free. So if you did enjoy yourself and you found this useful, then be sure to hit that subscribe button as you are not going to want to miss the next episode where I am going to teach you how to automate andesite alloys from scratch. You're not going to have to lift a finger. So I want to thank you so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye guys.